Okay, Bezat Hashem, today we're starting Mesechet Shabbat, which is very exciting news for many reasons. First of all, it's the first Mesechet in Seder Moed, right? We finished Brachot and we're starting now Shabbat, but Brachot is the Gemara, the only Gemara we have for Seder Zrayim. And Shabbat is the first Mesechet in Seder Moed. So it's very exciting. We're doing a real Hatchalah, we're not just doing Mesechet, also in Seder. It's very exciting. Now, just a brief introduction before we start this Mishnah, because today all we're going to do is the Mishnah, actually. We're doing Amud Yomi, so, Zat Hashem. We know on Shabbat, there are certain things that we do actively to be Mekadesh HaShabbat, to sanctify Shabbat. That's called Zachot Yom HaShabbat Lekadesho. What does that mean is we actively do certain things to infuse Kedusha, significant sanctity, into the day of Shabbat. There's also certain things we do, which is shamor, which is lo ta'asu melacha. There's certain things we refrain from, we don't do, and that also creates a certain atmosphere by not doing certain melachot, certain behaviors, certain actions, okay? Now the general thought, the general rule, which we'll get to as we go through this mesechta, is that there are 39 av melachot on Shabbat. That's very important just to define the terms before we see this inside, but we know that there were 39 behaviors or actions done in constructing the Mishkan. And those are generally looked at as the 39 Av Melachot, primary Melachot, that would be prohibited to do on Shabbat. Primary forms of work that are prohibited a sort to do on Shabbat. Now, if there's a, a behavior that's very similar, it might also be an Av Melacha. If it's similar but not exactly the same, it could be called a tolada, or a derivative. Literally means a child, but it means a derivative, a byproduct of that. Essentially, an alacha, an av and a tolada are the same, which means, in the sense that if a person chas v'shalom does one of these avot melachot, the av melachan Shabbat, so he's chayav. If he does the tolada, he's also chayav. Now, what your chayav, I'll mention in a second, but. That's the idea in general. The idea is, is that there's Ab Melachot and there's Toldot. That's the, the general rule. Now, this Mishnah picks, introduces to us the concept of Hotza'a or Yitziot HaShabbat. That the concept of transference, of taking an item from one Rishut to a different Rishut. Oh, so in order to appreciate this, we have to understand, let's step back a second, that there is a Halacha, we know it's very commonly called carrying. You're not allowed to carry on Shabbat. What is carrying? So there's different Rishuyot regarding Shabbat. We have what's called a private domain, which is Rishut Hayachid, and a public domain, which is called Rishut Harabim. That's the general, okay, two. There's actually two other domains also at Carmelit and Makom Pator. We're not gonna talk about that right now because it's not applicable right now. But let's just talk about private, Rishut Hayachid, Rishut Harabim. Much of this Masech that happens to be talks about this idea of Hotza'a, of carrying from one Rishut to another. A lot of the Masech that does. Tosafot actually explains three different reasons why the Masech that starts talking about Hotza'a. Logically, what should the Masech that have started to talk about? How to keep Shabbat. So you could have said how to keep Shabbat, but you could have even started from Erev Shabbat. Meaning, if you're going in chronological order, so you don't start Shabbat on Shabbat, you start Shabbat on Erev Shabbat. What, what are the certain, and we're going to speak about things about like that in the Masechta later, certain things you're not allowed to do on Erev Shabbat because it could lead to problems on Shabbat itself. So Tosafot explains with three different answers why we start talking in this Masechta about Hotza'a. That's the first thing. But just to understand, let's focus in on this because we're going to go through very technical examples today. What is this concept of Hotza'a? So the Torah teaches us, Rashi actually alludes to this. He quotes a pasuk. It says, Moshe Rabbeinu announced, if you look at Rashi, even before we see the Mishnah, just take a look at Rashi. He quotes a pasuk. He says, um, He quotes a pasuk. It's the uh, first narrow line in Rashi. If you look, he quotes a pasuk there, which we'll speak more about later. Moshe Rabbeinu announced, that the Jewish people should not bring things from Machane Yisrael, from the Jewish encampment, to Machane Leviyah, to the Levi's encampment on Shabbat. They shouldn't do that because that would be considered carrying from their domain to a, a different domain, the public domain, from private to public. That would be the issue. So, Gemara here, if you want. 
Rashi just quotes that pasuk. Tosafot happens to be quotes a different pasuk which has to associate it with the man, which also there was an issue for the people to bring their vessels outside of the camp to collect man on Shabbat would also be a similar issue of transferring an item from one domain to another. Now, just one last point before we get into the Mishnah. Really, the Psukim allude to this idea using the concept of hotza'a. Hotza'a would be taking from private, an item from a private domain, out to a public domain. But hachnasa, from public to private, is the same isur. Mm-hmm. It's the same isur, it's just considered a tolada. But essentially, it's the same thing. Whether it's going from private to public, which is actually the av, or, or the tolada, the byproduct of that, which is from public to private, carrying something, would be equally problematic. Now, before we see the Mishnah inside, there's two components to make you chayav on Shabbat for hotza'ah. For, for, for carrying from one domain, transference of an item from one domain to another. There has to be an akira. Akira means literally uprooting or lifting. So you lift an item, let's just take a simple example, in your private domain, Rishut HaYachid, and then you go outside to the public domain, you're not Chayav yet. What do you still have to do? Hanacha. What's Hanacha? Putting down. So to be Chayav for outside, there's two important components. There has to be an Akira, lifting in a private domain, or just in one domain, one Rishut, going out to a public Rishut HaRabim, and then Hanacha, putting it down there. If you don't have both of these, you're not going to be Chayav and Adar right to level. Okay, you might be Chayav Mid Rabbanan, we'll see, it's Isur Rabbanan, we should say. But you're not going to be Chayav and Adar right to level. Sorry, I said last uh, introduction, but really there's a couple of other things here. When the Mishnayot say Chayav, generally in this context, at least in this Mishnah, is Chayav Mid Raita. Now, if you're Chayav Mid Raita for, for a Malachan Shabbat, what, what's the punishment? What's the outcome of that? Mikhan, if it was no? Bishogeg, Unintentionally, Koban Chatat. If it was B'mezid, without Edim and Atra, without warning, Mi without witnesses, so it's Chayav Karet. If it was with warning and with Hatra'a, with Edim and Atra'a, witnesses and warning, so then you'll be Chayav Skila. I mean, not you. Someone could be Chayav Skila. That's the three levels. Shogeg is Chatat, Mezid is Karet. If it's Mezid and you all said witnesses and warning, so then it's Chayav Skila, stoning in court. Which is with Aresia? Another, neither one. It just means Edim and Atra. Edim and Atra, witnesses, and they warned you, that would be Chayav Skida. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this Mishnah is going to tell us there are certain examples <clears throat> that you'll be Chayav on a Da'oraita level. There are certain examples that are Asur on a Da'orabanan level, but you won't be Chayav on right, but it's Asur still. And then there's certain examples which we'll get to, I'll, I'll, I'll speak out, there's not even, it's even mutar. It's completely mutar in the first place. So let me just introduce how it is and then we'll see how it breaks down in the Mishnah. If one person does both akira and anacha from one domain to another, one reshut to another, he's chayav and right the level. If two people participate, one does the akira, one does the anacha, it's asur midrabanan. If one person does the akira and the anacha and then there's another person who's simply passive, he's mikabel. We'll see. He's not chayav at all. Actually, as Rashi learned, it's even mutar lechatchila. That's what Rashi learns over here. Mutar lechatchila. Now let's go through the examples. It'll make more sense as we illustrate. We're going to try to be, be clear about this using an illustration. Now the Mishnah uses the example of an ani and a balabait. It's really simply so that we can understand it better. Really, the idea here is you have somebody standing outside in Rishut Rabim. And you have somebody standing inside in public in a private domain, Rashut Yachid. Okay? The example that's used is Balabait, who's standing inside, and Ani, a poor man who's coming trying to solicit something from the from the uh, rich man, from the Balabait inside. So just to get a picture of that is Ani comes along with his basket, let's say. He picks it up in the public domain, he transfers it into the private domain, gives it to the Balabait. And when he puts it in the Balabayit's hands, what happens just now? He did Akira in a public domain. It's just an example. And then Anacha, putting it in the hands of the Balabayit is considered Anacha because your hand is considered already private domain. So Akira, public domain. Hotza'a, transferring it, Achnasa actually, but it means a transference of domain. Now it's in private domain. I put it in, the Ani puts it in the, the Balabayit's hands. That's Anacha. Who's Chayav? The Ani. What about the Balabayit? Like you said, because he's not doing anything. 
he's just passive. Okay, so we're going to go through now four examples of Chayav Da'oraita, and then we're going to have four other examples here in the Mishnah. It says the Mishnah, Yitziot Shabbat Shtayim Shehen Arba. When it comes to these transferences between one Rishut and another, it's Shtayim Shehen Arba. There are two, Shehen Arba Bifnim, sorry, two which are four inside, which means there's two uh, examples, as we'll see, where someone will be chayav, in this case, bifnim means the balabayit, we'll just use him as the example. He'll be chayav in a da'oraita level based on being inside. And it's shehein arba, it's four, because we're going to have two additional levels of rabbinic isur. <coughs> Not asur mi da'oraita, but asur mi da'rabanan. So it's shtayim shehein arba bifnim, two that are asur mi da'oraita for the one inside, <coughs> that are going to be two more that are also asur mi da'rabanan. And also, we're going to have examples. Two mid-oraita are going to be asur bachutz for the ani standing outside, asur and chayav, I should say, which have another two that are asur on a rabbinic level. That's why it's shtayim shehein arba. Two which are asur mid-oraita with another two, which is a total of four, to bring you up to a total of four cases for the person standing bachutz, standing outside to be asur, not chayav, because they're examples rabbanan, you're not chayav, but would be asur, asur, pator aval asur, that kind of thing. Fine. So let's go through the examples now. Just for clarity's sake, we're going to try to illustrate so we get it clear. Everybody clear about what we're working with here? Yossi, we good so far? Yeah. Good. So Ketza, the Mishnah first illustrates the examples of bachutz because that was the second item introduced in the Mishnah. Okay, let's start. Ha'ani omed bachutz. So you have the poor man standing outside. Let's just make a, uh, an example here. This is the door. Okay, this is the doorway. You're going to be the balabayit. I'll be the ani. I don't mind. I'll be the ani. You're the balabayit. Okay, here's, here's the door. He's the balabayit. Okay, here's the door. This is the door of the house, okay. and it's Shabbat, okay? So I'm standing, I'm the ani standing outside. This is my basket. I want to give it to you, and I want you to give me bread, whatever there it is. There's a fan or something that I... Uh, a door. Let's just, let's just say, try to keep things very simple. Mm -hmm. I'm in public domain. I'm in Rishut HaRabim. You're in... Right. Good. And there's a door, and I'm coming over to your house. Fine. So let's go like this. First example. Ketzad. Ha'ani omed bachutz, the poor man standing outside. Ubalabayit bifnim. Okay? And the balabayit is standing inside. So I'm outside, you're inside. You're the balabayit. Okay? Pashat ha'ani et yado lifnim. If the ani stretches his hands inside. So I take my basket. I want you to put bread in my basket and I pick it up in public domain. So what did I just do? Akira. I'm the Ani, okay? I did Akira in public domain, Ashut HaRabim. And then I stretch my hand through the doorway into your hand. I put the basket down into your hand. Vinatan letoch yado shabalabayit. And he puts it in the hands of the balabayit. Okay, that's case number one. So what did I just do as the poor man? I did Akira and Rashut HaRabim. Transference into a private domain and then Anacha into the hands of Matan. The Balabayit. So the middle step is necessary because otherwise you're not Chayat. Rabim Liachid. Rabim Liachid, exactly. So we just had case number one, which is where the Ani, the one Bachutz, does a Akira in public domain, transfers into Yachid, and then puts it down into Matan's Hanachan. hands, which is considered a Hanacha in private domain. Example number one. Mm -hmm. Oh, alternatively, another way that I'll be Chayat outside, that I didn't give you something, but the opposite. You were holding in the pub, in the private domain bread. Let's just say something, something, you were holding something in your house. Shenata, I stretch my hand into your reshut. I stretch my hand into the private domain. Shenatal mitochas, you were holding this. I take it from <coughs> your hand. The hotziha ani, and then I bring it outside to the public domain. And let's say I put it down. Let's say I put it down. It's, it's unfortunate you seem to learn. And I put it down. So I stretched my hand in, took something from your hand, which is considered Akira, okay? Bring it outside, put it down. Now I've done Akira b'shut hayachid, anacha b'shut harabim. So says the Mishnah, but see, I brought it outside. Ha'ani chayav. So the poor man is going to be chayav in both of these examples. Ubalabayit patur. And this is where Rashi says, balabayit patur. L'chatechile, he didn't even do anything wrong. Right. It's mutar lechatechila. There's no issue here. He was passive, completely passive, entirely throughout this thing. He has done nothing wrong. He didn't do either akira or anacha. He's completely exempt. Mutar lechatechila. But the ani in this case who did akira and anacha 
either from the public to the private or the private to the public, either way, he is Chayav and Adaraita level. Clear? Yeah. So far, so good. Clear so far. Good. These are the examples of Shtayim Bachutz. <coughs> Shtayim to Isurei Daoraita for the man who's standing outside. Good, Matan? So far, yeah. so good? Akira and Otsam Rabim Leachi. And then when he's inside, he's Anacha and Otsam Rachi de Rabim. You got it? So it goes both ways. Yeah, it's like vice versa. Either he does the Akira outside, Anacha inside, or he does the Akira inside, Anacha outside. But either way, the guy who's standing outside is going to be Chayav Mita Oraita because he did both important parts of the Malacha to be Chayav. But how, I, I don't understand how it's the, the separation between Av and Toladan here happens if the, it's the, basically almost the same action. We don't have to focus so much on that. The only point I was making is Achnasa, actually bringing inside, is the Tolada. But Midoraita, it's the same. The okay. Psak is the same. Lemaisa, it's the same. Okay. That was examples. First, we illustrated where we're talking about uh, the two ways the Ani standing Pachutz could be Chayav Midoraita. Now, let's talk about Bifnim. For the Balabayit standing inside, how will he be Chayav? Now, it's exactly the same thing, just in the reverse. So, mm-hmm. let's see. So now, let's go to the Balabait. So we're going to talk about now Shtayim of the Omed Bifnim, of the Balabait. Pashat Balabait et Yado, the Balabait stretches out his hand, okay? So you stretched out your hand through the doorway. Lachu, it's outside. Venatan letoch yado shel ani. And you gave me, the ani outside, bread. Okay? So you picked up bread in your house. Stretch your hand through the doorway. Gave it to the ani outside. You did an akira inside. Anacha outside. In my hand, that's considered anacha, that's a placement. This is basically from Yechid to Rabim now. Yechid Rabim, you're going to be chayav. Good. O shenatal mitocha, or you stretch your hand out to me. You took something from my hand, the mm. poor man. Ve'echnis balabayit, and then you brought it inside. So you did an akira mm. from my hand, outside. Brought it inside and then put it down. So balabayit ve'echnis, balabayit chayav. So now the balabayit is going to be chayav, because you did akira and anacha either way. And the Ani is going to be Patur again. And here at Lechat Chila Mutar, he didn't do anything. He was just passive all along. He accepted, but he didn't do anything. And therefore, the Ani is completely clear. The Balabait is Chayab because he did Akiran Anacha. So we just illustrated the two examples of Yisur Daoraita for the person standing outside and the two examples of Yisur Daoraita for the person standing inside, where each one did, in the, two, the four cases we gave so far, two cases each, where each of the parties did the entire process that would make him chayav of Akira and Anacha. Clear so far? So, first yeah. case is he stretches his hand out the Balabayas, drops him in, in, the, in the second grouping? Se- yeah, 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 yeah. Um, exactly. Outside. Exactly. And the second case is where he would reach, take, reach and just put it Bring back. it inside. So, so he did Akira out. outside, Anacha inside. Exactly. Good. So far, so good. This, these cases we just illustrated are where one person did both of the actions that are necessary to be chayav. Mm-hmm. Good? So the person who did the Aveira is Chayav. The one who was passive is Lachat Chila Mutar. He didn't do anything wrong. Now we're going to illustrate Shehen Arba. So what are the examples that are Asur Midrabanan? The other two examples. So I already told you, but the other two examples are going to be where we shared the Isur, essentially. I, one person did the Akira. The other one did the Anacha. Now this is not Asur on a right to level. But it's Asur on a rabbinic level. They're both going to be Patur, but it's Asur on a rabbinic level. Patur aval Asur. Sometimes we say Patur in the Mishnayot. Uh, sometimes we say Asur, it's actually Asur v'chayav, but here it means Asur, and it, but it's Patur as well. We're going to see. That's the examples here. So let's see. Patur from the Onish? Exactly. It means you're not Chayav uh, Chatat, you're not Chayav Skila, etc. Et so it's like a loophole. No, loophole, meaning it's, it's not going to be a Sardaraita. It's, it's a rabbinic enactment because they don't want you, if you do half of the action, so you might end up doing the entire action. If you only do the Akira and the other one does the Anacha, so you might end up also doing the Anacha. That's the problem. And you might fall into an Isur Daoraita. So this is a rabbinic Isur. Mm-hmm. Let's see the examples now. So now the Ani is standing outside. He stretches his hand inside. I stretch my hand inside with something. Okay, so yeah. I'm not on the outside. I did the Akira, I stretch my hand inside and I'm holding something, but now I didn't put it in your hand. If I put it in your hand, who's Chayav? Me, because yeah, I, I did Akira and Anacha. But instead, mitocha. 
The Balabayit took it from my hand. You hear the difference? I didn't put it in the Balabayit's hand. He took it from my hand. And then he puts it down. So I did the Akira outside. I put it my hand inside. He, he took it ha. and he did the Anacha. So each of us did half of the action here. <clears throat> the Balabayit took from my hand. That's case number one. Or the Balabayit put something in my hand, Vehotzi, and then the Ani brought it outside. So now the Balabayit did the Akira and Rashut Tayachid in his own domain. He put it in my hand. I took it outside to the public domain, and then I put it down. It means I did the Anacha. So in the first example we just gave, the Ani did the Akira, the Balabayit did the Anacha. In the second example, the Balabayit did Anacha in private domain, put it in my hand, I put my hand outside, and then put it down, and I did Anacha outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody see? Yeah, Rabim and uh, Anacha. Each one did half. Akira, and... Exactly. And the Ashir is doing the, the Anacha, and doing from Rashut uh, Rabim Le'achid. Exactly. Right? Good. Shneem Turim. So the Mishnah says they're both Patur. Now, Patur does not mean it's Mutar. They're exempt. But it's patur aval asur. Okay, that's what it means. It means asur mid rabbanan. And again, the reason the rabbi said this is problematic is because if you start off doing an akira or you do the anacha, in the case of where you start off doing the akira, you might end up doing anacha as well, which would be asur da oraita. And even if you're at the end of it, you're doing the anacha only, the problem is in the future you might also incorporate an akira with that, and then that would actually be again an asur da oraita. So the rabbis banned this. Okay, that's the next two. The final two cases in the Mishnah, which is the flip. Those were examples where, 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 again, the first two examples in the last part of the Mishnah is the Ani stretched his hand inside and he, the Balabai took something from him. So Ani did Akira, Balabai did Anacha. Or in the reverse, the Balabai did the, Aki, the Akira, put it in my hand, I did Anacha outside. Okay? <coughs> final two examples. Pashat Balabai did Yado Lachutz, the Balabai stretched his hand outside with something, with bread, let's say. So the Balabayit did Akira. I took it from the Balabayit's hand and did the Anacha and Rashut HaRabim. So now he did the Akira, I did the Anacha outside. And Ani took from his hand. Or he took from his hand and brought it inside. Means the Balabayit stretched out his hand to the Ani. He took from the hands of the Ani outside. One second. And brought it inside. I uh, sorry, so I put it in his hand. I put it into the hand of the Balabayit to stretch his hand outside. He brought his hand inside and put it down. So I did the Akira outside. He did the Anacha inside. Again, Shneem Turin, they're both going to be Patur because again, either I did the Akira, you did the Anacha, or vice versa, and therefore they're going to be Patur. Now, there's something very important to explain over here before we finish off. We said it's Shtayim Shehein Arba, two which is four. But if you're following, really it should be eight cases, not four cases. Because let's remember, we said we're in the first part of the Mishnah, if the Ani does both parts, Akira and Anacha is Chayab Mida and we illustrated how it could be the Ani doing both parts. We also illustrated how the Balabayat could do both parts with two cases, which are Asumi Da'oraita and Hadi Chayab Mida Fine. But then we moved on to illustrate four more cases. Everybody saw we did four more cases, two examples where the Ani does the Akira and the Balabayit does the Anacha, and two examples where the Balabayit does the Akira, and the Ani does the Anacha. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> now hold on, the problem is, ultimately if we're saying that it, they're both Asur to do this, so it actually comes out that there's eight examples of Isur. So why does it say Shtayim Shehein Arba, no, two which is four? <laughs> right. Two, no, but four, but it's only four. It's only four. So yeah. four and four is eight. Mm. Listen. That's all listen, no, but listen, Shema. In the let's say let's take the last four cases. Mm -hmm. They're both Asur. Yeah. If each if I did in each of these examples, they're both going to be Asur, what they're doing. It's Asur each yeah. that means there's four more examples so for each of them. No, there's eight. That's why there's eight. Because eight doesn't make sense. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say eight. No. So what does it mean when it says eight? No, there's eight for there's eight for each one. Eight for each one. Think about it. Because there's eight for each one. It's not Shtayim Shein Arba. It's really two, which is eight, if you want to say it, or four, which is eight. But the point is, it's really eight because there's four more cases, and if they're both doing something as source, so that means that really there's eight examples. So Rashi explains just to be finish off here with this. 
the mish it is a sur, it is a sur, but we're only including those where you're starting off, you're doing the akira. When it lists the number two, which is four, the Mishnah is, it is a sur to do the anacha by itself as well, not to be not to, not to be confusing. It is a sur because the concern is if you do the anacha by itself now, you might do it later, including akira, which make you chayab mm-hmm. But, you can but do it, only anacha writes, it only writes, exactly. So that's why it only writes two, which is four, because it's highlighting where would there be more of a concern where you started off. Even though you're not doing the Anacha after, if you start off the Akira, there's more of an issue right now that you're going to finish it off and do Anacha as well to be Chayab Mita Oraita. So again, to be clear, it's also a start to engage and only to do the Anacha Midra Banan, but the Mishnah is only including in the number over here the examples where you either do both, Akira and Anacha, or you start off the Akira because then there's more of a concern that you'll finish off with Anacha as well, which is an Isur Da Oraita. Okay, so we're going to stop here. God willing, we'll pick up, stop at the bottom of Bet Mudalaf. We'll pick up with the Gemara tomorrow, challenging the format of this Mishnah. Any questions? We'll stop here. That's the last Rashi, right?